What's going on, everyone? I'm in the middle of nowhere. Absolutely nowhere. And I lost my red brakes. We are limping along, driving in sports manual mode so that way we can have the majority of the braking to be done by the engine and the transmission. But just look at that. We're in the middle of nowhere right now. Came out here to pick up a lawnmower and my red brakes is shot. All I hear is all that scuffing noise. So yeah, I'll tell you guys a little bit more once I once I get a little bit closer home. Hopefully you guys heard that. It is horrible back there. Let me tell you, it is absolutely just horrible that sound. But Fortunately for me, I made it to my neighborhood. As you guys can see, we have our Cobalt. This is the impact gun I'm gonna use to basically get these uh, wheel locks off. Now I could do it the manual way, but again, the rain's about to come, so I'm gonna try to hurry up. This is an electric impact gun. Big boy, big boy. I use this bad boy here to take off a uh, harmonic balancer. We got our Stanley tool case. Now, this is a wonderful tool case on wheels, made in the USA. Now it's just a rolling case that you can basically take this part off. You can open this bad boy up. Maybe using the Stanley wrench. Or I may end up using this Husky. See that right there, Husky? With the swivel head. Oh, here we go. Here's our sockets. These are power belt sockets. This is what we'll be using to remove the brake pads. C clamp here. This is my trusty dusty husky. This is actually a socket. Yeah, what happened is when I had my Land Cruiser, something fell on it and broke the actual swivel head. So I had to basically tighten down a uh, socket. A C clamp is going to be used so that way we can decompress the piston inside of the brake caliber so that way it'll allow us to reinstall the new brake pads. Check the lugs to see if I can get them hand untightened and if not then I'll use the impact gun. I'm gonna put this wheel boot in the front of the wheels. So as you can see, the wheel was free spinning. That means the wheel is off the ground. That's a good enough clearance to get that tire off. recommend is to replace the brake pads in the rotors but I'm on a tight budget so we're just going to do the brake pads right now later we'll come back in and we'll replace this with uh, drilled slotted rotors forgot to mention I'm using uh, got this uh, mp3 player here that I'm um, listening to my music Tim Co got it off of Amazon that's what I'm listening to right now 
music helps me do <laughs> it helps me get the job done without music it's just boring and then you're wasting a lot of time it's the 17 and, and what we're gonna do is we're going to unloosen and remove these two bolts on the back side of the brake caliber probably will extend it to kind of give it give me more leverage so that's kind of tight there. So what I could do is take my hammer and kind of help break it free. However, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the Stanley. Since these things are really on here tight, I'm gonna use my cheetah bar. Put that through that. Golly, that was tight. There we go. Cheetah bar definitely did it. And as you can see, it's got the lube here to keep it from seizing up. So we don't want to put this on the ground. We want to put this somewhere so that way it doesn't get dirt and debris around it. Sometimes if it's really seized up, you'll have to use heat and apply it to here. Say for instance, these things do seize, they'll cause premature damage to your new brake pads. Let me use a flat head to get rid of it. All right, I'm gonna put this somewhere so it doesn't damage anything. It seems to be okay right there. It's not stressing out any components. Let's see, how can we get these bad boys out of here? So they are just like seized over here. Mm. There we go. Wow. And that's the back side. This is complete brake pad failure. Again, I was driving to pick up a lawnmower and then all I heard was <sighs> which basically references that I lost my brake pads. So this is the new hardware. These are the new pads. Again, this is the model. And we got some lubrication for our brakes. Typically when you replace the hardware, you wanna match it up first. Make sure you got the right part. That looks right. All right, that matches as well. So we're gonna take our flathead and kind of get it in between. And just wash your eyes. I'm gonna hold this with my hand so that way it doesn't go flying off. There's a lip right here. If you rub your finger there, you can kind of feel it. But that needs to go along that wall. Now take our flathead. Use the flathead to get it nice in there. Go. And kind of push it down. Take the flathead. Use the flathead to lay it down properly. Take the brake pad. I like to sit the bottom down first. There we go. Alright, so that's somewhat there. Now we need something to tap right here. There we go. And we got our brake pad fully secured to the rotor. Now the rear is a bit tricky because, you know, it's on the rear, so it's a little bit more, I don't want to say a nuisance, but it's tedious. There we go. We got that one off. Let's set that down. Feels nice and tight. Alright, so now 
let's do the bottom. The bottom is a bit more easier to apply because you can see it much more easier. Let's go ahead and do the bottom. Now it's she's fully, she's fully tightened down. Now we can take the C-clamp and use that to disc compress the piston on the actual motor. And we can go from there. Right. Take this, size it up. All right. Press the piston in. the piston in. Just want to do a slow, slow. There we go. Kind of loose a little bit so that we can get prepared for the next cell. There we go, got one. There right, we go. Get it threaded. Now we can actually tighten it down. That is how you change the rear brake pads. Repeat the same process for the other rear honestly want to paint this thing <laughs> i'll come back another time and start painting these calibers you know prevent it from rusting out i had a caliber rust out on me uh on my land cruiser so that's kind of how i learned how beneficial painted calibers are all right so these are the front brake pads they're a little bit more simple to change because all you have to do is just basically remove this pin these two uh sliding pins and of course you got to remove this however it depends on the driving conditions you go through that will determine how easy this would be so i just took this bad boy off now i gotta remove this thing which is basically attached to these two pins here okay so I'm gonna use this pick to get this bad boy out of here. Now we do have replacement hooks. I'm not concerned about damage you know, since we have replacement pins. Now I can try to get it out, kind of wiggle it through because it's, it's definitely in there. I may have to use supplies, but I'm gonna twist and turn it a little bit, kind of break it free from whatever it's been stuck on. I don't usually have to go this far, but still, just to get it out, jeez. You can see that she was definitely in there. These sliding pins, they're going to be a pain in the rear to take off. Just due to the fact that the type of conditions that we uh, drive through. Many a times when these things are fresh and new, you can basically pop them off. In this case, I can't. So I'm going to use my hammer to tap on them. Another way to release them is basically apply heat to each side. I may end up having to buy new pins. I'm going to use this. Let's see if I can use this to proceed it. You can see that one came out. There we go. Commonly these pins right here, they just slide out this way. Again, they slide out this way, push in that way, slide out this way. This pin right here, it's pretty much gashed up back there. You really can't see it, but it's, it's screwed. This one, 
I can't get it to come out at all. This one, I can get it to come out. We're basically bringing out the Dremel 3000. And we're gonna utilize this to finish. You can see that little cut right there. We're gonna finish cutting this bad boy and see if we can stick a little flathead in between here and uh, see if flathead will help us wedge it out. So we'll see. Okay. Trying to get this thing now. Come up out. Okay, there we go. Let's see if we can take the pliers and kind of work it out. Nope. Nope. She is not coming out. So this side right here is a bit seized up. So we're just gonna have to still try to do it our way. Do it the way that we're doing. Eventually, something will give. Just try to keep until something gives. I'll be back. All right, quick update on my engineering. We got our vice grips here. This side is going to be the painful side. Yeah, just keep wiggling it out. <clears throat> so for this side, I'm considering doing like a screwdriver, like on the side that taking a hammer probably not the rubber hammer probably something real much more heavier so i went back and decided to use this bad boy took this in and put it on here on the actual screw as you can say this uh pin okay so i took one end on that side then i took this other end and hammer at this end here like that and bam 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 what do you know she went on through there we go and that's it so I'm gonna try to bend it back to shake will she actually push on through Let's see if we can get that and do it. And there we go. So now this side is free. And we just gotta give it some love, some persuasion. To do top and bottom, top and bottom. Mm. Mm. There we go. And now we got her out. To actually get your pistons and you got two pistons on this side and two pistons here take a little piece of wood a little, little wood block a little wood block and I shove it inside of there and then what I do on the other side is I go ahead and grab my uh, flathead so I just bought a new flathead since I'm always trying to look for my other flathead uh, this is a uh, three apes Okay, really nice, long, durable flathead. And basically you take your flathead and you just pull back, pull back, boom. All right, she's in there and look at that, flat. Those pistons are inside so we can install our new brake pads. There we go, and we're just gonna use our, just use this tool here and we're just gonna cut and make another cut. Good to go. I'm gonna just try to trim as much as I can so that way I can get it out. Those pins are now officially gone. So this was the back side that was uh, pretty gashed up. As you can see, it was gashed up on this side. This was the other side, which was here. This daggone pin kept moving when I was trying to use the uh, Dremel. So it kept uh, to just jumping. So I ended up using the vice grips to hold it down and I finally was able to uh, 
cut the end and then I use a flathead and hammer it to knock it off because it was pretty tight in there. But uh, other than that, I got the new brake pad on here. I'm gonna put the other one on there. I'm gonna slide our new pins in. Just as a FYI, sometimes you, even if you have your pistons completely in, sometimes it's a bit challenging to get these brake pads to go inside. So try to at least square them up, get them inside as possible. Take a rubber hammer and just kind of persuade it to get in there. It's gonna scuff up the, the sides, but you'll eventually get it in take these pins and we're gonna slide them through. This pin needs to slide through here, here, and then that end. Then you'll take this pin here, and you just shove it through that, and then you do it on the same side. This middle piece will basically go inside the back end like that. So that's how you keep those pins in there. So I'm just gonna utilize this grease that I have here from the job that I did for a needle bearing and whatever access I'm gonna wipe that off. Do the same thing to the other one. Very, very, very thin. So that way that will keep it from getting stuck like it did before. Let's take this hook and we're gonna adjust it. Use the hook to pull her up, so I'm gonna take it from the other side. There we go. This pin, this other one. Let's adjust that, put that up in there. Sometimes you gotta kinda bend it low. There we go. So now we got these pins secure. And just wipe this excess grease. So now we're not gonna experience that issue with these getting all difficult. <laughs> <laughs> this portion here, it loops through this, it goes up underneath. So uh, may the force be with you guys. I'm gonna take this hook and try to squeeze this pin up out. <clears throat> there we go. I'm gonna have to adjust it, but that's no problem. I can always fix that. that Adjust it a little bit so that way it's not rubbing against the rotor. Now let's turn this rotor, and that's perfect. This pin is not rubbing against the rotor, and it's not going to rub against my wheel neither. 